Hi class, we are on chapter 4.5, Exponential and Logarithmic Equations. We are going to use all the stuff that we've learned over the last four sections and use those to solve equations that contain exponential functions and logarithmic uh, functions and terms as well. So, <clears throat> recall that exponentials and logarithms are inverses. So a lot of times what's going to happen here is we're going to have to go from one form to the other. So in order to f solve an exponential uh, equation, a lot of times we have to take its logarithmic form, do some work, and then come back to its exponential form and do some work to solve. Same thing with logarithmic, rather logarithmic forms. <clears throat> we might have to turn it into an exponential function or an exponential equation and then do some work there and then turn it back into a logarithmic equation in order to finish solving. So a lot of times we're going back and forth, back and forth between the two forms in order to solve. Um, when we have application problems, if they're asking something like, I'm going to invest this much money that earns interest at this particular rate, how much money are we going to have after this amount of time um, goes by, right? In that instance, the input they're giving you is time, and they're asking you how much money we're going to have. So that's our output. Okay, that would be an exponential function, right? The input is time. And we're trying to decide, trying to figure out how much money we're going to have. Now, if they uh, switch it up a little bit, <clears throat> and they have the exact same situation, but instead of saying, um, "This is how much time has passed." How much are we going to make if instead they say, I want to know how long it's going to be for me to make this much money. The equation is the same, but with the way that they're asking it, it now requires us to use logarithms instead because we need to use the inverse function, right? They're giving us the output, right? I know how much money I'm going to have, but I don't know how long it's going to take. So what they're asking me for it is the input of the exponential function, right? So we're given an output and they're asked to, we're asked to solve for an input. We're going to use logarithms for that sort of situation, okay? So all of this basically summarizes what I just said, right? So generally, <clears throat> when solving exponential and log logarithmic problems, we're going to use our calculator, right? Um, a lot of times we have to do uh, reciprocal X pow uh, powers, reciprocal exponents, um, or we have to divide one logarithm by another logarithm. So a lot of times we're going to come up with decimal value um, answers. So remember that decimals are just approximations. So we generally say four decimals of accuracy. Okay. Now, if on an exam, if I say I want the exact value, then that means I need to see the form of the exact value. So log this over log that would be your answer and not its decimal equivalent. Okay. I'll show you what I mean as we go through some problems. Okay. So let's go ahead and do some examples. Okay. So first, uh, let's solve five times three to the X minus four equals three. So the first thing that we want to do is in a case like this is isolate X, right? So just like with regular equations, um, we're undoing PEMDAS using opposite operations. So we're going to try to isolate this. So we'll add the four, divide the five, and try to isolate our exponential. So plus four will meet seven, divide by five, gives us the exponential um, equation, three to the x equals seven over five. So from this, we can use that change of base formula that we found or we can just take our log of both sides. It's probably better to just understand how to solve these things rather than trying to memorize the uh, formulas in this case. So we'll take log of both sides. So we'll put this inside of a logarithm, this inside of a logarithm. Whether or not it's log base 10 or natural log doesn't really matter. Okay, so we'll log both sides. <clears throat> Use the rule to bring the x to the outside. And then I slate x by dividing both sides, right? And then that's our answer. So if I said I want the exact answer, this is the answer that I would want. This is the answer exactly, right? 
Typically though, for these, the decimal approximation is fine. So we want to do it to four decimal places. So we don't just cut it off at four decimal places. Remember, um, we need to round up or round down depending on what the uh, fifth value is, right? So if you plug this into your calculator, you get a long string of values. And when we round, <coughs> depending on what that last number was, I don't remember what it was, uh, we will get 3063. Here's the same thing. We want to isolate our exponential. The problem here is that we have an exponential on both sides. So we can do one of two things. Um, I can just go ahead and log both sides. Um, in this case, natural log would be beneficial because uh, natural log of E cancels out to one. Um, and that's really nice. Or I can isolate um, all of my E's onto one side by dividing by e to the 3x on both sides or e to the negative 2x plus 5 on both sides. Um, it doesn't really matter. So in this case, let's go ahead and take the natural log of both sides because it's a little bit easier. Um, this will cancel to 3x because of the rules of exponents, of uh, logarithms. Here I have to separate this into two terms. This has to turn into natural log of 4 plus natural log of e to the negative 2x plus 5. Okay. So we can do both of those things at once. Remember, I'm trying to isolate x, but I still have x in this position. But now that I have natural log um, of two different things, I can use that same rule here to um, cancel out the e and the natural log. So this would pull out to the outside. Natural log of e just turns into 1. So my equation turns into this. And now I just got to combine my x's. So I'm going to move this to one side and get 5x plus 5 is natural log of 4 and then divide everything by 5. So that gives me 1 plus 1 fifth natural log of 4th. This is the exact answer. If I wanted to put it into a decimal form, I would plug this into my calculator and I get um, 1.2773 as my decimal approximation. Now, as I said before, there is more than one way to do this, so let's kind of explore a little bit. And let's do the other way that I suggested, which is dividing both sides by one of these um, e to a powers. Okay. So I have e to the 3x by 4e negative 2x plus. And so <clears throat> if I divide both sides by e to the 3x and also by 4, so that I have um, numbers over here and my base e to a powers on all on one side, right? So that's how I move it over. Divide this by e to the 3x. I divided this by 4. So I've isolated the exponentials. <clears throat> I just got to apply the rule of powers here, right? Same base, different powers. So negative 2x plus 5 minus 3x will give me e to the negative 5x plus 5. Okay. So from here, I can take natural log of both sides because of what happens with the e. So basically, this negative 5x plus 5 gets pulled out to a multiplier. Natural log of e is just 1. So, um, this becomes negative 5x plus 5 equals natural log of 1 fourth. I need to isolate the x so I can subtract 5 and then divide by negative 5. And I get the following. And if you notice, it's a little bit different than what we had here. This is 1 plus 1, 5, 1 over 5, natural log of 4. This is 1 minus 1 fifth, natural log 1 over 4. But notice, remember this is rules of exponents, right? this is a logarithm if I pull this back and put it back inside it's one fourth to the negative one power right which is the same as four so these two things are equivalent and if I plug this into my calculator we get out the same answer so this is a little bit different I have exponents on both sides um, however they are both different exponents right this is a base of seven this is a base of two so I have different bases that's going to be uh, a little different to solve. So what I want to do is the same thing. I want to get all the stuff with x on one side, all of the multipliers on the other side. So I'll divide by 2 and divide by 7x. Okay. And then here, we're going to use the rule of exponents where if we have a fraction to the same power, we can just pull out that power and have a base of a fraction. Okay. So that's what we have here. So from here, now I have an exponential equation, right? Base of 
and x equals something on the other side. I can log both sides, or I can use that change of base formula. It doesn't really matter. So I'll take the log of both sides. The x comes down. Then I divide both sides by this log. So this is my exact answer. And my decimal approximation is what I get when I plug this into my calculator. So again, remember, I could have used natural log instead of regular log. It doesn't really matter. Whichever one is fastest to get to on your calculator, button-wise, is what I suggest. And so we get negative 0 0.3237 as my value of x here. Okay. For this last one here, notice we all have the same, or they all have the same base of 5. Okay. So then what I'm allowed to do then is let's combine my logarithms okay, on this side. So this will turn to log base 5 of x times x plus 1. This has log of 5, so instead of trying to write this into exponential form as, you know, this one being 5 to 20, 5 to the power of x equals 20, and, and 5 to some power equals x times x plus 1, that's too much. Just like here where I take log of both sides, here I have log of both sides. I will just undo my log of both sides, right? It'll just be x times x plus 1 equals 20. Okay, I could not have done that straight away from here because it doesn't work that way because these are individual logs. It would, it will only work when I have one log um, with everything inside and one log with everything outside on the other side. Okay, that's why I had to combine them into a single log so that I can just take the logs out and then write this as an equation. So now it just becomes a quadratic. It's uh, x squared plus x minus 20 is 0. So I just solve this with by factoring, right? And it factors to x plus 5, x minus 4. So my answer is x equals 4 and negative 5. Okay. Um, and since logarithms have a domain of 0 to infinity, my answer is 4. Because I'm not allowed to plug in uh, negatives into logarithms, right? So negative 5 won't work as an answer here. So that leaves me with only one answer. An answer of x equals 4. Okay. okay, so let's do another example. Okay, so let's say that we have a town that was founded with 30,000 people. Okay, five years later, the population rises to 400,000, to 40,000, sorry. If the population of the town grows exponentially, how many years until the town will double in size? All right, so from this, we have an initial value of 30,000, right? That's how much we have when we first started. And with an input of 5, I get an output of 40,000. So I have a, uh, an initial value and I have an extra point here. So I want to use that with my equation of an exponential function in order to try to solve this, right? So I have 40,000 equals 30,000 times some unknown base, right? It's growth rate, raised to the fifth power because that's the time in, right? That's the input. I divide both sides by 30,000, right? So all the zeros cancel and I get 4 thirds equals b to the fifth. In order to isolate this b, I take the power of 1 fifth on both sides so that the 5 and the 1 fifth cancels. So I get b equals 4 thirds to the 1 fifth power. Okay. So again, what we're doing is we're trying to find the equation so that we can figure out the doubling time. right? So when I plug this into my calculator, it's 1.05922. So a yearly growth rate of about 6%, okay, 5.92%. So <clears throat> I want to know when my uh, population is going to double in size, right? So if I start with 30,000, I'd like to know when it's going to be 60,000, okay? I could have used 40,000 and 5 and then try to set something up for when is it going to be 80,000, right? But this is easier to do. So I have my initial value. This is my equation that I'm going to use. I need to know when this equation is going to equal 60,000, right? The doubling amount from its initial point. 
So I need to solve for x here, right? So that is going to be a logarithmic problem. So I'm going to divide both sides by 30,000. So that'll give me 2 equals 1.05922x. I can take log of both sides or use that change of base formula. Okay. So log of both sides, the x comes down, and then I divide by this log. And so I have my exact value, which doesn't help me as an answer, which is why a decimal approximation would be better here. So I get 12.0479, or approximately 12 years. It takes about 12 years for the population to double.